channel so my name is Simran Jade and I upload videos every week so today I'm gonna answer this particular question of yours that what you can do after BSc in statistics I have pursued my bachelor's in statistics from Surat Gujarat VNSU and I had few options on my mind which I had to choose from and at last I have went for I went for masters in data science and I was confused between two fields and I thought to try the both but at the end I chose masters in data science so what are fields we have after masters in after bachelors in statistics so we can go for masters in actuarial science so this particular field have a lot of scope a lot of job opportunities uh, but the only thing only con of this is that it's a too lengthy course like you have to study too much and you must have so much of knowledge it's not that you can if you don't have knowledge you cannot go for it but you have to study too much and from the nation i come from i come from india we have 14 or 20 papers for actual science and we have to cross all those papers and sort of stuff were complicated back then so i chose for masters in data science yeah and we can uh, go for masters in library and information science i'm seeing here because i've written it over here we have masters in quantitative economics masters in data science business analyst masters in statistics itself or uh, masters in data analysis whatever you can whatever you do it's all up to you if you love coding and if you also love analysis then you can go for data science or data analyst if you love big data you can go for it artificial intelligence so all of these courses uh, demands a person to have a bachelor's background from statistics or mathematics and if you have a background of bachelor's in statistics you can go for it if you are from india i strongly suggest you to give few exams that is IIT JAM and ISI Kolkata exam and there are few other data science uh, colleges in India who have their own exams and you can give that too and believe me if you crack that exam they have a good placement and you will be able to do good in that colleges. I personally gave IIT JAM but my EIR was 255 and I was unable to get the um, IIT. I got NIT but I didn't got the IIT and hence I didn't went for NIT. I chose to uh, study abroad instead because I don't want to drop in my studies. That's my personal belief and yes, if you are able to clear it then it's very good. Uh, I appreciate that and you should go for IITs because IIT have a good uh, uh, placements and you can study in less money and it's more worth it what would i say so yeah after iit isi kolkata but these are the few places where you have to study in your bachelor's and it's hard to get in but once you get in it's all fruitful so yeah and uh, what all you can do is masters in science masters in data science masters in business analyst this all are the courses which includes coding and statistics but if you want to purely go for statistics as a subject then what i said was actual science masters in statistics masters in quantitative economics those are the operation research there are so many fields which is purely based on statistics and in your masters you are only taught excel or some other languages which is very easy to use and you can get a good placement of your college whichever college you select so yeah that's that uh, but if you ask me personally where is the best opportunity what should a person do in, after bs in statistics if you are coldly interested in research work and uh, all of finding chi square and different techniques and all of that stuff you should go for masters in statistics but if you are more oriented towards job perspective then I suggest you to go for masters in data science or business analyst or actuarial science because those are the more developing fields and people there is more job opportunities in this field. If I complete my masters in data science, obviously I'll have a more job opportunities than masters in just statistics because companies want some coding languages so we can you know get that thing and um, go for this thing so it's up to you what you choose do you want uh, 
job oriented stuff or do you want something more research based so yeah that's that and yes if you clear iit jam and then you have to then you can get a five years phd program from iit bombay and that's great actually i applied for that but yeah and yeah after this i'll show you what uh, was all of my fee structure when i came to teesside university uh, when i applied for teesside university my fees was 15000 pounds for 2 years i have I, my courses masters in data science with advanced practice so one year data science and one year is the advanced practice so the, my total fees was 15000 pounds and i got the scholarship vice chancellor scholarship which was of 5000 pounds so we are rest, ref, left with 10000 pounds but people generally do get the scholarship of 1500 pounds or 2000 pounds so yeah you can expect that and you can try for vice chancellor scholarship if you get that then that's best and if you are from other country except india so you have other scholarship as well like stem scholarship or uh, fee waiver british fee waiver scholarship in which you get complete fee waiver but in india it's not the case vice chancellor scholarship is the highest one i feel and yeah that's that uh, my so my schooling fees was 10000 pounds and uh, for my visa i paid uh, for my whole of the visa thing took 2 lakhs rupees because 1 lakh 20000 was something for ihs that is medical certificate so that's that and uh, 60000 something of visa because i got my cash and the ending like end time of december and and i didn't want to take any risk so i went for the fast visa and it cost an so after visa and fees my uh, total amount came to 12 lakh rupees and my air flight tickets was of 90000 rupees that came my that uh, brought my uh, total amount to 12 lakh 90000 but generally air flight tickets are not that expensive but i came during covid and uh, flights flight tickets were expensive back then so it costed me this much otherwise it's not that costly and along with that you can you know consider 50000 over here and there for shopping because it is not that you will buy clothes or something like that but even if you buy your essential stuff it will cost you around that because uh, you need to buy some good jacket of course you don't want to you know uh, after a good jacket you can buy some essential stuff uh, it's up to you what cost you go for but mine was 50,000 because I'm a girl and I need so many products in my life apart from that I bought 50,000 rupees cash and X amount of money in my card it totally depends on you what you want to bring what you don't want to bring and so the total amount came to 15 lakh rupees so yeah my total cost of studying in TSI university all in all was up to 15 lakh rupees but I do not give the assurance that everyone will complete this course in this much because uh, it, it totally depends on person what scholarship do they get because not everyone gets this scholarship and if you if, if you are luckier and you get a complete period then it's more easy to you so yeah bear in mind it depends on what scholarship you get and apart from what big big uh, things are that I have said you like visa and uh, tickets there are very small amount of uh, money going over here and there like if you will do the loan then you have to give some money during the loan process so there is small amount taking out of the bank every time um, so yeah bear in mind that you have to also cost cut over there and yeah that's that and uh, do for my living expense uh, I'm a very frugal person I must uh, say and my living expense in Middlesbrough is 30,000 at max at max for a month because uh, so X amount is my rent mm my rent is 16 to 17 thousand and uh, apart from that i spend for groceries and stuff like that so it cost me 30 thousand per month which is um, bare minimum in united kingdom you need that much amount of money and after month or two you can uh, two to three months you can survive on your money by that time you will get the job 
so yeah that's that uh, i hope you like this video and you consider subscribing my channel up till that bye bye see you hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is simran jain and i make videos on whatever comes to my head so today i'm gonna answer this particular question of what you can do after bsc in statistics so yeah i have done my bachelor's in statistics and i have chosen for masters in data science but i'll let you know what all fields you can go for and which are trending and you know job wise it's all 